be seated. On behalf of Matt and Carrie, I want to welcome you all here and just thank you uh, for being here on, uh, in a supportive role for them. Uh, you have all been selected out of all their friends and family, all the people that they know, to be here because you matter to them. You have played a significant role in their lives and they wanted you to be able to play a role in this significant moment in their lives. You have encouraged them through challenges. You have held their hand through hardships. You have uh, challenged them to new heights and, and to grab a hold of their dreams. And you've celebrated with them during those moments of success. And this is just the most recent reason to celebrate with them as they have truly found someone they want to spend the rest of their lives with. We are in the midst of a beautiful setting, beautiful couple, beautiful people. But what makes this day special is what we're here to do. We're here to join these two together for the rest of their lives. Would you pray with me? Father, we are grateful that you have brought these two together on this special day, that you have seen this coming, and now we are just getting a glimpse of the full planning and the wonderful story that is unfolding here before us. And ask that we would be able to that story in all of its splendor, all of its glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are. This did not just happen. There was a lot of time and energy and and preparation that led to this day, and there is a story behind it all. One day, a girl in a red dress walks into an Indian restaurant. <laughs> Sounds like the lead into a great joke. <laughs> and although it does put a smile on our face, there is no joke here. In fact, this is how you two met. Sometimes we spend so much time looking to find love when all we need to do is just be still and let love find us. Matt and Carrie's story are a little bit different on how that happened. <laughs> See, Matt had heard of this restaurant, he'd been there, he'd, he'd wanted to go there for some time, and he, 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 he had other things going on. He said, this is a perfect time for me to go enjoy this Indian restaurant that I heard so many great things about. And he walked in, he was the only person in the place, just there to enjoy a nice, quiet meal. See, but Carrie, she had no desire to be involved in an Indian restaurant, did not want Indian cuisine, but she felt a divine nudge to go and buy food from this location. <laughs> And she heard that nudge, and she acted on that nudge, and they found themselves in this restaurant. Now, Matt, when he saw her, was like, you got to be kidding me. How is this blonde hair, red, head, red, red dress lady right here right now? This has to be a joke. Are there cameras here? Because it, his luck could not have been any better. Carrie didn't even notice him. She was just there to get some food. And it took a couple minutes before the owners of the restaurant, through different conversations, allowed them to come together and they finally had a chance to talk. And Matt, in that moment, realized that he was going to take advantage of this and, and took that brave leap to ask her if she wanted to have lunch sometime. She wanted to have a, have a meal with him. And have that first sense. meal turned into multiple meals. And it turned into, ultimately, them not being able to spend nearly enough time together. See, both of you have very detailed lives, very, very specific lives and very independent lives. And to find space to let those two lives merge to create time for each other was a challenge. And you leaned in on that challenge. You did not let it deter you. You were patient. You allowed your schedules to align. And then when you did spend time together, you realized this truly was something special and worth every sacrifice and every inconvenience to be able to spend time with each other. Matt made his intentions very clear during that time. Very elaborate plans, plans that would make most of us guys look really lazy in our dating and in our honoring of our women. But I won't go into these details. You can talk to him about those privately. <laughs> Let's just say he rolled out the red carpet to her. He swooned her. He captivated her. And they spent quality time together. As they spent those, those months merging their lives, they realized that whether it be traveling or home on the couch, they just loved each other's company. They had a mutual love for food and, and match skills with cooking and Carrie's skills with baking were a perfect match. Just goes to say, you don't have to be great at everything, you just have to find people that are great at things you're not. They loved adventure, whether it be local or abroad, and after a couple years, confidence set in, and they knew they had found somebody they wanted to commit the rest of their lives with. Marriage is based on commitment, based on promises, promises to one another of undying love, of sacrifice. And so now I want to know if that is truly your intentions today. So Carrie, do you desire to marry Matt and to love and support him all the days of your life? I do. Matt, do you desire to marry Carrie and to love and support him all the days of your life? I do. Good answers. 
<laughs> you too are also here in a, in a role of support. Uh, you have promised to help them become the man and woman that they are today. And so I want to give you, their friends and family, an opportunity to make a promise to them as well. So when I ask if you will pledge your, your support, your response will be, we do. So here is your big moment, family and friends. Do you promise to love and support Matt and Carrie all the days of their lives? We do. Very good. You have behind you, standing next to you, in your life, people who have been through everything imaginable, anything that this world, this life can throw at them. You now have access to all that wisdom, all that experience. So when you find times where you don't know what to do, turn to the people that are here today. Turn to the people that support you, that surround you, as it's undoubtedly one of them will know just how to and want to celebrate with you. Another source of, of great wisdom for marriage comes from God's Word. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Jake Gerardo to read a passage written by the Apostle Paul as we find it in Ephesians 5, a letter that he wrote to the church in Ephesus as they were going through questions and challenges as to how to navigate life, and in particular, what does a relationship between husband and wife look like? So Jake, would you read? A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 30 through 33. For we are the members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Beginning of this passage, we see this command to uh, uh, for a man and to leave his father and mother. Now, this is not to to mean that your relationship with your mothers and fathers aren't every bit as important. There's now a new higher priority, which is each other, someone to invest your entire lives with, everything about you, your your energies, your your dreams, your passions to invest and pour into each other, and that's the wisest investment you'll ever make. And the result, as we read, is that the two will become one, a picture of unity, two unique people. All of your own history and experiences get brought into this new relationship, this new covenant. You get to combine all your strengths. You get to combine all your dreams, your wisdom, your resources, and you become exponentially more capable of seizing a hold of everything that this life has to offer. That's very exciting. You guys should, should be excited. That does not happen every day. And why this is in part exciting is because it demonstrates the relationship that we have with God and God's support that he pledges to us. It says this is a great mystery, the way that Christ and the church are one. The relationship that Christ has with the church is a mere image of the relationship that a husband has with his wife. So when we look at what relationship God has with his church, we see that it's a relationship founded on love, built on love, and not just a generic love, not the type of love that you have for a pet or the love that you have for a particular hobby. This is a love that you have for each other, an agape love. This is the love that God has for us. It's an undying love. It's an undeserving love. It's an unwavering love. It will never cease. It will never lessen. And then we can do nothing that will ever increase it. That's the type of love that you get to pour into each other. It's a relationship that is built up stronger with strength. Scripture says that when we are weak, God is strong and that we can lean on his strength in our weaknesses. We can lean on him in our moments of need. Same with your marriage. You do not have to be the strongest person that's independent and, and, and handle everything yourself now. You can lean on each other knowing that the other is there to support you. We gain access to God's wisdom. You do not have to be the expert in everything. You do not have to be competent in everything. Your gifts and abilities will complement each other and you will be better off as a result. And we gain ga access to God's forgiveness. In your marriage, you will have more opportunity to forgive than in any relationship you've ever had. And that's a thing of beauty. Because as we forgive, we get to experience forgiveness. And we get to experience what a trusting, safe relationship looks like. Lean in on forgiveness, as it will truly show you the heart of God. You have the privilege and blessing to support one, any, one another for the rest of your lives, just like Christ supports us. As a picture of this, you have decided to light the unity candle, which is the imagery of two people, two things, coming together to create an altogether new expression of those two. So at this time, Matt and Carrie, please light your candle. <laughs>
So the candle didn't stay lit, did it? <laughs> you know what that means, right? That's a bad sign, right? You know what that means, right? A big, bigger lighter. That means that there's going to be times where you need to relight the candle. <laughs> Just part of marriage, my friends. Just part of marriage. Apostle Paul goes on to write, to, to write, again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. I think we can all agree love and respect is a, is a, a pivotal foundation to a loving marriage. But what it actually looks like is hard to find. So I've written out some examples of what you can anticipate in your first months of marriage. Matt, when she's had a rough day and just needs you to hear her frustrations, love your wife and be a good listener. Not a fixer, a listener. Matt, when she wants you to start running with her, and we know you love running, love your wife and lace up those shoes, buddy. <laughs> But Matt, when Carrie's dreams start to tug at her heart and her ambitions start to stir in a way she can no longer ignore, love your wife and make the sacrifices necessary so that she can see those dreams become reality. Now, Carrie, you must respect Matt. A lot. When he needs to kick up his feet and play a video game with the fellows, after a long day of work, respect your husband and let him refresh. When he wants to go practice his martial arts, respect your husband as he works out his stress and works on refining his skills. Now, when he wants to enter the local fighting tournament, full contact, bare knuckle, no holds barred, you respectfully tell him that he's crazy. <laughs> and that pretty face is yours now. <laughs> but Carrie, when Matt needs to make a tough decision for the family and he weighs in all the factors and he hears your heart and he, and he tries to, to weigh all the options and he, and he comes on a decision, respect his instincts to lead your family to a brighter tomorrow. To commemorate these promises and these commitments, you've bought rings for each other. And these rings are made from the most valuable materials that we know. Precious metals, precious gems. They have meaning. They have value. Give the ring. As I look at these rings, Matt, your ring is very subtle, very strong. It's heavy. It has weight. It's a symbolic of you. You're reliable. You're durable. Um, you carry a certain amount of of weight on your shoulders. Carrie, your ring is, is much more delicate, uh, but it has a sparkle to it. It, it shows the, the sparkle that you have, the, um, the, the not just not frailty, but the, the delicateness of you. And, but to make no bones about it, it is studded with diamonds. And diamonds are much harder than what Matt's ring's made of. So you might look like the stronger one in the relationship, but let's, let's not undercut Carrie. She is, has huge amounts of strength and durability. And these rings typify your characteristics in your relationship. So at this time, Matt, would you take her ring, place that on her finger. Carrie? I promise to always strive to nurture and grow in happiness, both together and individually. I promise to provide you with a safe harbor for all moments that lie ahead, the good, the bad, the ups and the downs in all of our lives. And I promise to grow with you together through the years, 
so that we can continue learning, sharing, and adventuring through life as one. Gary, take his ring. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I promise to always remember the night that you told me that you believe that you were meant to find me. In that moment, I realized how priceless every second is with you, and I knew that I wanted the rest of my life to be like that. Now, you're all my reasons why I said yes to becoming your wife. I promise to freely receive all of your love, giving you all of mine, never holding back, always fighting for and believing in us. There's no one else that I respect or admire more than you. I also promise to always wear red and to really try to be on time. <laughs> and I promise to cherish knowing that my home is where you are and I'll go anywhere with you and I know I'll be happy. Excellent. The rings that you give to each other are of great value, but what makes them priceless is what they symbolize. They symbolize those promises to one another. As you look at your rings from this day forward, you can be reassured that there is someone who loves you, who adores you, who has chosen you over all others. That is what makes your rings priceless. Would you pray with me? Father God, we offer this family to you this couple, and we pray your protection over them, that their dreams would become reality, that they would experience provision in their careers, that they would experience protection in their health, that they would have a blessing in their ministry, that others would see their lives and be drawn to you. They would have a profound impact as others seek for meaning and desiring love in its purest form. We ask that they would be the inspiration that would draw many to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Matt, do you want to kiss your bride? Okay. Well, when I say, not a second earlier. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is with great joy and privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. Matt, you may now kiss your bride. Okay, we have a reception to go to, so let's keep it quick, kids. <laughs> it's my honor to be the first person to present you, and if you have rose petals, shower this couple, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Rossman. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, I think it's going to get crazy right here. Up first, we have Katie Maresca and Corey Rossman. Up next, we have Brianna Barr and Ryan Kane. Larissa Barr, escorted by Jake Gerardo and Chris Hempel. Our Matron of Honor and Best Man, Janessa Kachuk and Wasun Fu. Family and friends, make some noise for our newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Matt Rossman. Once everyone gets seated, before we begin lunch, we're going to go ahead and have the blessing. Well, if you know Matt, he's considered a foodie with his unique flavor of all types of cuisines. It's not surprising that he and Carrie met at a restaurant, an Indian restaurant, with fun spark of conversation. It is said that a family that eats and prays together stays together. As the best way to one's heart is through the stomach, we celebrate the love of food and the love of hearts with the new husband and wife as they share their first meal together. Let us savor the flavor of joy and love today as we bless the food we are about to eat. Please join hands to symbolize our unity for today's celebration. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Bless this nourishing food in front of us, our dear loved ones around us, and the light of our Lord within us. We give you thanks for this glorious day and the freedom to come together. We are grateful for this meal and we sh that we will share and humbly thank you. In this we pray, amen. amen. Enjoy your food. Jim and Linda Barr, Dale and Tina Rossman, and John and Linda Maresca. Thank you guys for raising two amazing people. Carrie, congratulations. You look radiant, and Matt is so lucky to have you. 
You know, when Matt first started dating Carrie, it was about seven or eight months until he introduced me to her. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. He constantly talked about her, uh, told me all his plans for his dates, how they went, how awesome she was. Um, I was really excited for him. So naturally, I was always asking him, when can I meet her? His response was always, you can meet Carrie when you get a girlfriend. That way, if you tell stories about me, I'll tell stories about you. <laughs> I call that mutually assured destruction. Well played, man. And she's always supportive of Matt. As I spent more time around him, I noticed that no matter what I said or Matt did, um, she was always behind me, at least in public. When I call Matt a fatty after he stopped exercising, she's like, no, emphatically, Matt is perfect the way he is. So, honestly, at the time, I thought she might have needed to get her eyes checked. <laughs> However, I'm really happy that Matt found someone to support him in all his future endeavors, uh, to help him achieve his hopes and dreams, and to drive him home when he drinks a little too much. <laughs> So, Carrie, I want to thank you and wish you the best of luck. <laughs> when, I wanted, when I sat down to really think about what I want to say about Matt, um, I ran into a couple problems. Uh, <laughs> first, <laughs> after being friends for literally our whole adult lives and roommates through college, there were many, many, many stories that I couldn't share on this occasion. <laughs> Mainly because Linda would kill me. She would kill me. Uh, we grew up together, and we went from eating chili with ranch dressing and pizza pockets every night to learning how to make real meals. Uh, well, at least this guy did. Um, the second problem I had was, I mean, I really don't know what to say about him. You know, what can you say about a person that's always been there to support you at your worst? to encourage you to be your best, and it is definitely one, one of the best men I've ever known. Um, he makes all our lives better just by being in them. I'll tell you this, Carrie, you will never find a more dedicated and loyal husband than that. You never have to worry about him not only trying his best, but literally trying to be the best. Whether it's being a husband, a son, a brother, a friend, and someday a father, he will never fail. It's just not his DNA. I know this because once he refused to leave Dave and Buster's until he got a perfect score on this <laughs> random shooting game we're playing. Yeah, marriage isn't about finding a person that you can live with. It's finding a person you can't live without. I can't tell you ha how happy I am today that Matt found the person he can't live without because no one deserves it more. So please join me in raising your glasses to Matt and Carrie. May they live happily ever after. But sister, I wanted to say that I'm so proud of the woman you've become. You are beautiful inside and out, and you love the Lord. You have passion and spirit, and you are always ready for the next adventure. And you always have a great story to tell that, let's be honest, can only seem to happen to carry, whether it's swimming with sharks and surviving, or going on an African safari, or skydiving. That's my sister, the adventure. But now she's beginning a new and very important adventure with you, in her life with you, Matt. But I've seen how well you treated my sister. Um, you show her so much love, and you're always looking out for her and protecting her. You're an awesome guy who I know will lead and care for my sister always. I've seen her on many adventures, but when she's with you, she's the happiest I've ever seen her. So the love you two share is very special, and I thank God for you both and what you have together. Keep loving, sharing life together, forgiving, keeping God at the center of your relationship, and always remembering to have fun together. So lots of blessings on your boat to the bride of you.
Father's love. Somewhere over the rainbow, with all your heart, for your soul. To scale you the 30 foot tree in front of the house. When you were a little older, of course. And you traveled to Europe and Africa. After graduating college, you became certified in scuba, then swam with sharks, and did a tiger shark in Fiji named after you. Carrie, you always, we always wondered who you would find to share your adventures with. And Matt is also served by his group. And good thing. And actively, at one time or another, has been involved in hockey, boxing, wrestling, and has been known to wrestle alligators. Matt also has traveled many parts of Europe and the Americas, Jamaica and Cayman Islands. But wait, there is one. Matt, your culinary skills beat many of those TV type of those personalities. Even though I've only had the chance to experience once, I'm very proud at that. Matt, you have shown a warmth and caring person, what a warm and caring person you are. And I would like to take this time to recommend to our family. And in conclusion, now, somehow Matt and Curry, as you've heard, met at a little Indian restaurant in Corona and have taken this adventure to New Heights. You are two amazing individuals. Together have become even more amazing couple. Love constantly you slowly, forgive quickly, and share everything, be each other's best friends, put your marriage first, may God bless your union and bring you the greatest joy today and always. I, I would like to um, toast our daughter and wonderful husband, Matt. May they know only happiness, health, and continued blessings to Matt and Carrie Rossman of the Adventure Begin. All right, you guys. Bridge to burn my fear and time with my regret. 
never be the path for safe return There's a thing called love that we all forget And it's a wasted love that we all regret You live your life just once So don't forget about a thing called love Don't forget, forget about a thing called love So here we are, we're just the same And you will never know My secret plan, how close we came To share another road And have I lost my only chance To tell you how I feel inside Is it just me I'd like to know Or are we all just a little blind you guys put your hands together for Matt and Carrie. So right now we'll be doing the father-daughter dance followed by the mother-son dance and then I'm gonna get all of you guys up here and we're gonna do a group photo but right now we have a very special song for Carrie and her father. to invite Carrie's mother, her brother, her sisters to join in. You guys can clap for them as they come up here.
So you guys put your hands together for them. I was dancing with my darling to the Tennessee walls when an old friend I happened to see. Introduced him to my loved one And while they were dancing My friend stole my sweetheart from me I remember the night And the Tennessee walks Now I know just how much I've lost Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee Wars Put your hands together for Matt and his mother. Can you guys squeeze in back there? Now that I got you guys all up here, we're going to do the hokey pokey. No, we're not, we're not going to do that. All right, you guys. All right, guys, hands in the air. We're partying. All right, well, one more, one more. Let's do this. Uh, Matt and Carrie are going to kiss. Everyone point your fingers at them. Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much.